Hi guys, how are you doing? I hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my facial waxing routine. I know that under lockdown circumstances, those of you who get waxing done outside may not be able to. I personally do my waxing myself. Just got a routine figured out and it works for me and that way I save a bit of money by doing it myself and so I thought I'd share my routine with you again I'm not a professional waxer facial waxer is that a thing but what I'm about to share works for me if you want to try it out yourself go ahead I've done my fair amount of research in this and have come up with a routine that works for me so let's get started the first thing to note about waxing is how you prepare your skin the skin on our face is very sensitive I know that we need to treat our skin in general really well but particularly the face is subjected to a lot of damage due to environmental external factors so with waxing you do need to be careful and you need to prepare your skin the right way so the first thing you need to do with your skin is exfoliate skin do not and I repeat do not exfoliate your skin 48 hours before your wax the reason is exfoliation chemical or physical leaves your skin vulnerable and you can actually damage your skin by exfoliating so close to your waxing time 48 hours before your wax exfoliate your skin physically and maybe chemically depending on the strength of the chemical exfoliator that you're using number two right before you wax you have to ensure that your skin is clean now wax does not work if you have excess amount of oil on your skin it won't be as effective so you do need to wash your face have a clean face to work with I'm not even wearing lip balm because lip balm has oils and that will affect the mouth area waxing I'm about to do clean your face free of oils and all that grit and dirt and the next thing right before wax make sure that your face is dry so don't just clean your face and start the wax and then the last thing to note is if your hair is long feel free to cut it down to a length that you'll be able to wax easily so those are things I quickly do before I wax and I prepare my skin as such another extra tip nourish your skin a few days before the wax so that the skin is healthy and is in its best condition possible so Let's begin. Let's begin the waxing process. I'm going to zoom you in, show you my facial hair in all its glory. If you have sensitive skin, I would highly recommend going for a wax that's been designed and manufactured for sensitive skin. So the brand and the type of wax I go for is the Wheat Facial Wax Strips. It doesn't actually say facial wax strips. I feel like facial wax strips are a bit more pricier, but honestly, I don't, I don't think it makes much of a difference. This one's made for sensitive skin and you get way more packs in there. So it's up to you whether you like special facial wax strips or just general ones. Say it's for legs, but skin to skin, and it's been made for sensitive skin. Anyway, let's get started. So let's begin. The first thing I do is grab the wax strip and I would cut it into, the first thing I would do is grab a wax strip and I would cut it into a size that's gonna work. So generally, I do my sideburns first, or the, this area first. I would cut about this much and I would use the end. I would use the end with this tab because it's easier to pull and navigate. And I would warm the wax strip in my hand and then I would pull it. Okay, so I would place the wax close to my ear. Place it like so. Leave that and I will apply the next strip. Now comes the exciting part and the painful part. We're gonna pull the wax strip. So in three, two, one. It's okay, I'm used to it now. By the way, if you are triggered by these sorts of imagery, you'll find it disturbing. Don't watch this. Don't watch this. Weirdly satisfying. On to the next one. So if I do this, bring my double chin back, you can see the line. So I usually apply another wax here to get rid of it. You can tell which part I waxed. We're gonna do another strip. 
same principle, warm the wax. Now we're going to apply it to this part right here. I don't get much pulled out, which is good. That means I can reuse this wax strip. So I'm just going to reapply it to the area above the first wax strip that we placed. So, okay, so we're going to do this side. And then the same principle, I'm just going to apply this, this one on just above the first wax strip. Okay, and we're going to do this very quickly because it's all it's close to the eye area and but don't worry, it won't, it won't pull the eye area. It's going to do it really fast to so pull your skin tightly. So be careful not to go too close to the eye area. The area under the eye is super sensitive. Sides of the faces are done. Again, you can reuse this um, if you want and do the line over here on your double chin. By the way, this is actually a pretty funny way if you really think about it. Whip out your double chin and let the wax sit and then we're just going to quickly pull it. Just think about the direction of the hair. Some people have the direction going that way for the hair and then some people's hair go the other direction so you have to pull in the opposite direction to the flow of your hair. So for me I'm just going to pull it like so. Okay so now we're going to do the chin hair. My favorite. Don't worry about all the wax left on the skin. We'll actually go and clean that up. Same thing warm the wax in our hand. I should just make this my permanent look. Okay, so for me, because the chin hairs are very stubborn, I mean, it did pull out a few. It did pull out a few chin hairs, but my chin hair, they're, they're actually quite stubborn, so I have to go and pluck them out with hand, and they usually come out because the wax has loosened the hair, and then I can just go in and just pick it up with my hand, and they will just easily come off, like so. Thing. Okay, so we've done the sides of the face and the chin. The only two areas we've got left to do is the moustache area and the eyebrows. We're going to do the lip next. That much. We're going to just go straight in and we're just going to use one half first. Now, we just wait for a couple of seconds. Pretty hard to do this and talk at the same time. Ugh. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other side of the wax strip. Whoa. Okay, so that's the moustache area. For the eyebrows, similar to what we did for lip, I'm just going to cut the top portion of this wax strip about that much. Warm it on your hands. I place it around the shape, natural shape that I would like. I like my eyebrow a bit thick, so I go around like so like so. So not all the way around because obviously the wax strip can't go round like that. Like so. Hold the skin back. One. Now the same wax strip you could just put it around now around the arch and it will give you a beautiful shape. We're gonna pull this one and similarly we're gonna put it around the arch. By the way if you get wax on your hair don't panic. Pull it off slowly and then apply oil and it will come off. So um, and that creates a nice shape. And now we're gonna do the inner part. We're gonna do the inside, and we're gonna we're gonna do the um, outer inner side of the eyebrows. Oh. For the bottom of the eyebrow, grab another thin strip. We're gonna cut it exactly into half, and we're gonna do the outer corner, and then the underneath. I've applied the wax strip holding my eyebrow up, so I get more of a straighter shape underneath my eyebrow. And then we're just going to do the bottom inner corners. Now I'm going to do the honors. Okay, now the waxing is complete. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is going in with some facial oil to remove the excess wax on my face. So I'm going to grab um, a cloth or a pad and oil and just go over it very gently on the skin. Very gently, don't be hard on your skin, it's very tender. The most important part about this whole process is the aftercare that follows waxing. So waxing, not the easiest process to do it yourself and it does leave your skin um, a little bit tender, red, um, slightly inflamed. Some of us might experience bumps. 
If you show adverse reactions, allergic reactions to waxing, I would highly suggest not attempting this. But my skin does recover fairly well. Um, and I also do the right things to make sure it does recover well. And I'm going to be sharing a few aftercare tips with you guys to end this video. So the tenderness and the redness and the bumps will last and should last somewhere between 24 hours to 48 hours after wax. So that's the normal amount of period. If these things last more than 48 hours, then you definitely should seek medical help or medical advice because that means that your skin could have had some allergic reaction to the waxing. But a little bit of redness and soreness is quite normal in the in the 48 hours after waxing. So here are the things that I try and do right after waxing and I highly recommend and would suggest that you guys do the same. I stay away from taking extremely warm hot showers. It's just gonna aggravate your skin and make it more red and inflamed. That also goes hand in hand with you know no hot saunas, just no hot intense um, warm treatments to the skin. Stick to cold or lukewarm showers. Stay away from the sun, no go zone, no sun. Don't apply any exfoliators, no chemical exfoliators or you know physical bead exfoliators because your skin is super sensitive, especially in that 48 hours after the wax. Please be super gentle. Try and use hydrating spray every now and then throughout the day as frequently as you can. I would highly recommend you investing into a hydration spray. Uh, try and uh, not do intense exercise because again, that would warm your skin up and could result in more inflammation. So try and avoid that and stick to low intensity exercise and wear heaps of sunblock. Um, even if you're indoors, wear lots of sunblock. So crucial, not just in the 48, 24 hours after waxing, just in general, wear lots of sunblock. Avoid swimming in waterways that aren't clean. With lockdown, obviously, pools and stuff might be closed, but you might go outdoor swimming. Maybe not do that in the 48 hours after the waxing. Stay away from products that contain strong scents. Doesn't matter if they're natural scent or artificial scent. Fragrance in general tends to irritate skin, and especially after waxing, your skin is super sensitive. Fragrance just stay away. If you can get hold of things like fresh aloe vera, any cooling products, uh, natural products, uh, go ahead and, and do that. I do like aloe vera on my skin. Um, and I can do a video separately on that, how I apply aloe vera to my skin. One or two types that are classified as cosmetic grade, uh, grade aloe vera and there's a whole variety of them that aren't actually good for the skin. So I can make another video, let me know in the comments below. Yeah, in general, just uh, be super careful in the 48 hours after waxing. Be very kind to your skin, treat it well. I hope this video was good. I hope this video was useful. If you have any tips for me and how I could improve this routine, please do let me know. As I've mentioned before, if you don't react that well to waxing, maybe just don't give this a go. The last thing I want to mention before I go is facial hair or just body hair in general is a very subjective thing. For me, to be honest, I've lasted all this while in lockdown without worrying about facial hair, but it's now getting to a point of starting to affect my makeup application and my content creation. So I just got sick of it, just getting in, in, in the way of things. So I just got sick of it. I wanted to change, so I got rid of it. But you don't have to get rid of your body hair if you don't want to. Totally your choice. I will see you guys in my next video. I'm going to film one for hair oil treatments. I'm going to film one on hair care. I'm going to be answering a lot of the questions you guys asked on Instagram. So keep an eye out for that. I've got so many little videos coming. My philosophy with skincare, hair care, and even just makeup is don't pay for things uh, more than you should. The average person really can't afford to invest into bougie, fancy ass treatments. I mean, they're nice to have, don't get me wrong. But yeah, my content is aimed to help regular women like myself and you um, and come up with very practical solutions around skincare, hair care and makeup and beauty things. Please do subscribe to this channel if you are new and please do share this video if you can and I will see you in my next video. Have an awesome, awesome day and see you very soon. Bye!